Hello, I'm Mr. E, and welcome to the first scripted episode of What's in the Box. This channel was intended as a catalog of the contents, accessories, paperwork, inserts, etc. of box collectibles so anyone could reference the video to ensure their item was complete. I came up with this idea while I was trying to match up a random box of accessories to figures that I had decided to sell. I know the channel is still in its infancy, but I hope people can still use it when they're looking to match up loose action figures with their accessories or maybe as a reference when trying to ensure the completeness of a marketplace or auctions listing. That being established, and segueing to the purpose of this particular video series, I come across a lot of figures, Transformers specifically, mislabeled on fan sites and forums as reissues, sometimes even auctions listing Transformers as original Generation 1 toys, when in fact, they are knockoffs. The purpose of the video series is to answer the question, is this... A knockoff. What's a knockoff, you may ask? Well, the Transformers Wiki defines knockoff as a product similar or identical to a product of one company, but made by another without the authorization of the original maker. In the Transformers fandom, the term is commonly abbreviated KO. The term bootleg is also sometimes used as a synonym. I've noticed an influx of knockoff Dinobots on G1 fan pages, as well as mislabeling G2 figures as G1, or even knockoffs themselves. So I decided to start there and explain the difference between the individual releases of these molds and how to spot knockoffs. The first Dinobot on our list is the strongest of all. Grimlock, of course. Is this a knockoff? The short answer, yes, absolutely. There are times I gamble with eBay auctions and buy a lot where the seller has no idea what they have and I spot a hidden gem buried under a pile of garbage. There are other times where the seller has no idea what they have and lists an item, unknowingly of course, as official when it's not. This is not one of those cases. I know this is a knockoff because I bought this item specifically for this video from an eBay seller located in China listing them falsely as G1 reissues. Here's a fact about the Generation 1 Dinobot and Grimlock molds, specifically. They are considered lost to Hasbro. I've tried to find a direct quote from Hasbro on this, but haven't been able to. Though this is a consensus between members of fan sites such as TFW 2015, Sabertron, TF Archive, and the wiki pages on the subject. If I'm wrong here, drop a link in the comments and I'll update the video. While you're at it, if you want to see some more videos like this, hit that like button and subscribe. Click that bell so you know when the next video in the series comes out. Now you're probably wondering what loss means in this context. I'm going to quote the TF Wiki again for the definition. Molds can be lost when Hasbro or Takara Tomy or any other toy company sells, closes down, or otherwise abandons a plant or factory. The molds can be sold as excess inventory as part of a warehouse deal. Sometimes they simply get misplaced in the supply chain between factory and warehouse. Occasionally, molds are outright destroyed in order to prevent piracy, or even get stolen by burglars for the internal components. Whatever cruel fate befalls a set of molds, once they're gone, they're gone for good. In some cases, Hasbro's Karatomi may actually still have a mold, which may or may not still be in a usable condition. But due to the sheer number of molds created over the years, in addition to the number of different factories and warehouses employed by the two companies over the years, they may be displaced somewhere, deep inside a warehouse. And since the molds are not necessarily marked with bright labels that say, Transformers Generation 1 1989 Pretender Bone Bee in a Robot Torso and Feet, in large letters, they're hard to track down once they have vanished off the radar. End quote. Known lost molds include Generation 1 Mirage, Beast Wars ultra-sized Leo Convoy, and all the G1 Dinobots. So we'll probably never see an official reissue of these particular toys again. I say probably because it could always find the molds, or Hasbro, Takara Tomy, could reverse engineer them. But that's unlikely because doing so would yield little profit for such an expensive undertaking for a niche market release. Now we'll go over the history and variations of the Grimlock mold. First up is the original release and intended use of the mold, Diaclone Grimlock. 
originally released by Takara Tomy in 1983 in the Diaclone Dinosaur Robo subline as simply Tyrannosaurus. This toy closely resembles a 1985 Transformers release of the figure. The difference is being metallic blue paint instead of red on the robot's die-cast metal hips, sharp, uniform, triangle-shaped teeth in the dinosaur mouth, different accessories including chromed sword and a little diaclone pilot that could ride inside the cockpit on the back of Tyrannosaurus in dino mode. Accessories included said sword, said pilot, a rocket launcher, three chrome missiles, and a double-barreled gun. For what I've been able to find, the pilot that came packed in the box was only available in green and black color combo. So here's some easy ways to tell if you're going to knock off Diaclone Grimlock. Number one. Look at the inner leg. These should be stamped with Takara, Japan. 1980 to 1984. And guess what? This one is not. This one is a knockoff. And he doesn't stand. Tyrannosaurus Robo was also released by GIG, or GIG in some European markets, in boxes identical to the Diaclone package, but using Latin-based letters in Italian instead of Japanese written in kanji. This figure has two variations. One with the blue colored die cast hips and chrome sword identical to the Takara Tomy Diaclone version. And one with red colored die cast hips and a flat red sword identical to the first G1 Transformers Grimlock release, which we'll get to in time. This is presumably because of a transition in the manufacturing plant to the new Transformers line following the discontinuation of the Diaclone line. I've seen no photos of the inner copyright stamp from these toys, but at the time all Transformers were manufactured in Japan, so one could assume both should have the same Japan stamp as the Diclone and Transformers releases. Well-known knockoffs at this time included Taiwanese version using the Diclone graphics, but with Latin-based letters and English text sans any mention of Takara Tomy, Hasbro, or Gig. Just text that states, Made in Taiwan, where a copyright would appear on the box, and hilariously misspelled and grammatically incorrect anglicized translation of the flavor text and description from the Takar version, including this descriptive word salad. For protecting the attack of Danger Dinosaur Corps, which information is not certified, Tyatron Team, newly developed dinosaur robot team, it has a large destructive force as a dinosaur, and a molility as a robot. It is really a super hostility mechanism. Also, the cross sail on the back has the dinosaur names listed thusly. Grimlock is Taiwanosaurus. Slag is Triceratope. Sludge is Prontosaurus. And Snarl has the only name spelled correctly with Stegosaurus. There is no mention of Swoop, as he was completely cut out of the graphics. Other knockoffs and bootlegs do exist. When in doubt of legitimacy, have a look at the stamp on the inner robot leg. If it's blank, it's a knockoff. In 1985, Hasbro released the officially named Grimlock toy that we all know and love. This figure has some modifications to the mold and deco, making it unique from the Diaclone version. For starters, Due to U.S. safety regulations, the teeth were filed down and blunted, leaving small gaps between the teeth on the top and bottom jaw when the mouth is closed. The stamp in the box on the inner leg in the robot will state Hasbro now, in addition to previous information, and the dinosaur will come with rub symbol or rub sign, as three-year-old me referred to it, announcing, albeit covertly, in a roundabout way, it's allegiance to the Autobot cause. Gone is a Diaclone pilot, but the cockpit is there and can still be opened. Grimlock's Energo sword is now flat red instead of chrome, and he still comes with a double barrel black blaster, black galaxial rocket launcher, and three silver rockets. He was available 
from 1985 to 1986. Grimlock's box has a gradient from black to red with a grid of whitish gray lines overlaid on it. It reuses the Diaclone Tyrannosaur robot box art highlighted by a yellow circle in which the grid is still visible. The top flap proudly displays the Transformers logo and underneath, beneath the window, there is a black bar also containing the logo and beneath that, a yellow bar listing his rank as Dinobot Commander. Inside another black box and name as Grimlock on the other right side of the yellow bar. Both black and yellow bars sit flush on top of each other and are the exact same size. Down and to the left of that is the Hasra logo and under that is an ages 6 and up recommendation. You'll also find the product code on the bottom right side. On both sides of the box, you'll find the same black to red gradient with the grayish white grid overlay as the front. Transformers logo on the top, crisp product shots of Grimlock in both modes. And another black box stacked flush on top of a yellow box of the same size, now reading Dinobot Grimlock from top to bottom. You'll see a painted battle scene covering the entirety of the back of the box. Transformers logo at the top, flavor text in yellow on the right, text specs and bio in a rectangle outlined in dashed marks indicating it should be cut out covers most of the bottom third of the artwork. To its right and above is the barcode and below that in another dotted rectangle is two robot points. The top of the box perpendicular to the flap you will see a four step process of Grimlock's transformation sequence. On the bottom you will see a red background with the grid overlay. On the right side you'll see the Transformers logo at the top, some legal copyright text in white at the bottom and underneath Dinobot Commander in a black rectangle followed by Grimlock in a yellow rectangle flush next to it. On the right side of the bottom you will see a crisp product shot of Grimlock in robot and dino mode. Of note, depending on what country you lived in, different companies distributed the Transformers with localized language, company logo, and even names. So you may see different logos on the bottom left corner of the box when finding box products. Some examples include Italy and GIG or GIG distributing the rebranded toys in Italian. Mexican Transformers used the IGA company logo with Spanish text. El Greco was the Greek Transformers company. Peru's company was Linza. Canadian Transformers, as all Canadian boxes were bilingual with French and English text. And in mainland Europe, MB was stamped on the bottom corner as Hasbro was in the process of taking over Milton Bradley in 1985 and used them to distribute the IP across the part of the world. This figure was reissued in Europe in 1991 as part of the classic line. The boxes in this line reused the box design, graphics, and art from the original 1985 release, but with slightly different layout and fonts on a gold-colored background. Notably, with classic now in front of Grimlock's name and Dinobot subgroup. The toy itself is identical to the 1985 release. Once more, look at the square box on his inner leg. Japan had a special mail-away offer for this exact figure in 1992, so you may find some seemingly remarkable newer-feeling Grimlocks, which were still identical to the 1985 release. In 1993, Hasbro released the Generation 2 Dinobots, and thankfully, Grimlock was one of them. There were three colors of Grimlock released in the G2 line. The first, a silver one, which is the rarest color, and often most easily mistaken for a G1. The second, a slightly less rarity, but also very rare, is a turquoise colored Grimlock. The most common was the third, blue colored version, which is the only version I ever saw in stores as a child. All three of these were released in identical clear Generation 2 clamshell packages, which easily yellow over time. Other than color, all three variations were identical with newly designed Generation 2 Autobot insignia and the word Autobot tampographed on the right side of his tail in dino mode, proudly proclaiming his allegiance. 
Sadly, these did not come with the heat activated rub symbol and the accessories were reduced to two. The black double barreled gun and the red Energo sword. Gone were his firing rocket launcher and rockets. Other than colors, there have been a few running changes. At some point, the Diaclone cockpit on the back was sealed, preventing it from being opened in later releases. Also, the G2 Dinobot's smoky clear plastic parts tend to be darker colored than the original, and modern knockoffs use the same dark color for the knockoffs of the Generation 1 toys when they should have the lighter colored plastic. Through my experience, the easiest way to see if your Grimlock is a knockoff is to have a look at the copyright stamp on the inside of the leg in robot mode. If it's blank, it's a knockoff. If it turns out your favorite toy from your childhood is a knockoff, don't be upset. It's still your favorite toy. Some vintage knockoffs were made very well. And it may be a knockoff, but it's still vintage. Here I'm going to use the word bootleg to refer to toys that were not official products but were made to cash in on the mechanical dinosaur changes to robot. This is obviously a transformer and your kids will love it craze of the 1980s. There's one special case in particular, the line called Prehistory Animal, which is a highly collectible bootleg Dinobot line. Don't confuse these with Ancient Animal, which is another name used for the Taiwanese Diaclone knockoffs. These are pretty unique among the other knockoffs and bootlegs which adorn dollar store shelves and flea market tables, as these aren't your typical low quality knockoffs. These were heavily modified sculpts of the Diaclone molds into fictitious dinosaurs, or maybe even kaiju. Their uniqueness has some people accepting them as worthy collectibles on their own merit. Though these are definitely of lower quality and higher fragility, than the official product, they tend to fetch high prices on the aftermarket, especially when not broken, which is rare. Even higher prices than official vintage releases. The Grimlock of this mold is retooled to look like a kaiju reminiscent of Godzilla. It's cast in a brownish, bronzish, gold spiral plastic, which from my experiences in actual Transformer molds tends to be very fragile. Rest in peace, Randy. It has a spike retooled on its nose, as well as crest or bump on the top of its head, and a segmented, bumped frill running down its back, even replacing the Diaclone cockpit, which was removed. All the silver chrome is replaced with gold chrome, including a golden tongue. Whoever made this added an extra claw to the hand, two extra toe claws on each foot, and thought, you know what else he needs? Fangs. Giant fangs. There's even been extra detailing molding onto the dinosaur's hips. This is an extensive retool for a knockoff, which have been known to remove detailing to make remolding easier, or through loss of details by reverse engineering a mold from an existing figure. This is a work of art, and I will never own one, because it will crumble in my hands if I ever get a hold of one. Not that they are that fragile. That's how things work for me sometimes. Rest in peace, Slog from Unstructor. There's plenty of other bootlegs out there that don't use the mold at all. Just very basic transforming dinos cashing in on the popularity. Too many to discuss in this video. Now finally, this wouldn't be a proper what's in the box video without an unboxing. So let's open up this box and have a look at the differences. Guy up. Let's, uh... Let's, let's have a look at the box and see what differences, what is wrong with this box. I know it's a, a bootleg. No, it's a knockoff. But let's see if we can tell by just by looking at the box. First off, that catches my eye is this right here. These should be flush. The black on top of the yellow. That's the first dead giveaway. Next, this gray thing, I believe, I've never actually touched a G1 Grimlock box. So, most of this is by research. This here should be a separate piece of cardboard, I believe. And it should be inside, maybe? Correct me if I'm wrong. Other dead giveaway is the quality of the artwork. 
this looks oversaturated, this image of Grimlock. But the starbrush circle is very pixelated. You, you can tell it's been scanned. Moving on to the side here, everything looks all right, but these quality of a uh, photos, these these are just off. That you can, they're lower quality. You can see pixelation. You should not see pixelation in the original figure. Plus, this yellow is awfully dark. So this is like they just scan this. On the bottom, we get the same quality of uh, product shots. I mean, it, it's clearly scanned. Uh, the yellow's off. This looks all correct to me, I think. I could be wrong. This is actually an accessory thing. I listed this in the uh, video. I guess this is going to be a correction. As uh, legal, it's not legal, it's uh, contents. Maybe that's incorrect. Not about Commander Grimlock. All right, and the top, we're getting the same thing here. These are clearly they're they're more green. That's all I can say. They're they're more saturated, more green. It's not picking up as well in on the video, but they're clearly uh, the colors off. They're it, it's it's a good. Even the box, the coloring, like uh, that off white is like in the in the uh, the paint. So it's like they just scan the box. I mean, they're good quality, not it's high quality knockoff, but it's it's not perfect. And even back here, this looks the colors off. Colors off. There's pixelation where there should not be pixelation. Um. I've seen this art elsewhere. It just looks off. I mean, everything's where it's supposed to be, I believe. Um, the robot points, that should be brighter yellow. And then over here, there's a, a proofreading error. Carries one, carries Energo, N, go sword. Other than arrogance and lack of speed, has no real weakness. I don't know if that's grammatically incorrect or whatnot. Um, should have looked into that a little bit better. We'll know for my other ones. I have to read the uh, text specs to make sure they're they're correct. And even that guy, that that image right there, just is wrong. Just too dark. In fact, it's like they took this one and blew it up for this one. That, that's all I can explain it. All right, let's open it up. Let's see what we got inside. Also, the box doesn't feel like it's great quality. It looks... It could, it could confuse someone. Alright, that box is empty. Those are the instruction booklets. I'm going to leave them off to the side. And more interested in looking at the figure itself. Uh, before we crack it open, it's, it's got the blunted teeth. This was reverse engineered. There's no stickers applied, so I guess the stickers are in here. We'd have to apply the stickers. In fact, now i got to open this up and see if there are stickers. Another dead giveaway is, is this type of packaging. This is too modern of a package. When it comes to the... Uh, how they have it sealed. Or maybe not. Yep, here's the sticker sheet. There's his chest stickers. There's that there. I wonder if they have the... Uh, the rub sign. I don't see one here. Oh, yeah, there it is. 
Yeah. Any of uh, the original ones, I believe the rub sign is always attached. And this one doesn't even work. Give it a sec. Yeah, that rub sign doesn't even work. Another bit, big giveaway. Non-working rub sign. Let's, uh, guess there's no good way of opening them up. Guess we'll do this side here. Oh well. <laughs> I know it's a knockoff. Alright. <laughs> Destroy that. Here we go. Alright. Let's have a look at it. We have our sword. Blunted. Very cheaply. Very flexible. This is definitely a knockoff. It, it, it should not do that. It should be hard plastic. Um, the gun looks right. Unfortunately, I don't know what the missiles look like very closely. So. And there's a the rocket launcher. Looks like it would fire. I hear the spring in there. Okay. Oh, this is close enough. Here, looking at it right off the bat, there's a dark plastic. I can bring out a G1 here. It's definitely darker. So first off, yeah. That's darker. The teeth, are the teeth are right. There's a mold loss right there. At the eye, it's been smoothed over. Or maybe this one's damaged. That one might just be damaged. Here's the second one. <laughs> Let's see about this. No, that's the same way. See, there's like a, a defect there in the originals. And this one doesn't have that. Interesting. All right, let's see what else we got here. Once more. That should be attached there. Also rounded. Um, any more loss of mold? Because these are clearly reverse engineered. Pretty heavy. The gold is a little darker. Once more here, you can really see it. That that plastic is the wrong color. It's darker. Still impressed by the, the quality of it. Now here on the back, this is where it's going to be interesting. Does this open? No. This is using the newer mold where this is sealed permanently shut. Um, I actually don't have one of those. And then here, this is interesting. Um, see how I got stopped? That was changed later on for this, so it would not stop it. So that wouldn't break off.
The eye is also narrower. So it's definitely retooled from a newer mold than the 1984 molds. Uh, the G2, let's get a G2 here. Guess it don't matter, broken turquoise. Um, still modified slightly. You can see that it's closer to that color plastic. No, the, the the chrome will wear down over time, so I I can't go by that. There's there's no uh, comparison. Um, that defect up there in the the face is gone. Oh, nope. Those are all all dotted. Okay. So that might be a difference in, in the feet, the toes. Um, hands are the same. Okay, let's transform. All right, he's got the clips. Oh, that is loose. That is very loose. That is the opposite. That is tight. It doesn't want to stay paid. All right. So far, so good. Looks like we've lost some detail on the uh, this bright one. Yeah, this is a. Oh, is that my G two? Yeah. Okay, this is the G two. Hips wrong. Hips have been remolded. There's an extra circle there. And actually, the G2, they're, they're using a different mold. I believe they're using the, uh, the Generation 1 mold or the Diaclone mold. And it's different hips completely. Let's open up this G1 and just have a comparison. With so many slight mold variations. It's hard to go by what was actually remolded. No, that's that's right. That's right. The G2 is different. Or my G2's a knockoff. That'd be surprising. Oh, geez. No, I'm pairing my G2 to the knockoff. Because that G2 was not easy to come by. Nope, G2s all, are all only have one. Okay, cool. I know this guy is not a knockoff. Okay, back to our, our knockoff knockoff. Uh, and that's what I thought. It was going to have the stamps. So Hasbro 1980 84. Here's our G1. 
1984 Hasbro, all rights reserved, China. And here is our G2. Or that was our G2. This is our G1. Hasbro, 1984. And then over here, we have Hanji Takara. Company Limited, Japan, 1980-84. And yeah, they are pretty much identical when it comes to that. So it's going to be harder to notice that. Now, that kanji is not so clear as that. So, when looking at comparing the newer ones, the newer knockoffs, you're going to have to look at the quality of the uh, of the uh, the print. Because it is rough. It is, it is smoother. And also, this is in painted. They cut back on paint underneath there. Underneath the plastic. So that's not painted, so that's a dead giveaway. There is some quality issues. Definite quality issues. The key thing I know is going to be the way I tell us is the darker plastic. The, the plastic just does not match with the whole set of these. I can see through the, the bubble. The plastic is just, they're using the darker clear plastic that would, you would see on the G2. But other than that, they're pretty good knockoffs. I mean, you pick it up quick you'd probably be mistaken even the head sculpt looks looks almost sharper like they've retooled it but it's also smaller and the paint on the head is uh, face paint face plate it's hard to show in there. That is uh, also a darker red. Hmm. Alright. So there we have our... That is tight. Oh. There's our band. Well, he stands better than, than the, the Diclone knockoffs I have. There's our knockoff Grimlock. But he falls. He still falls. And there's what's in today's box. Hopefully this video was informative and you can now spot the difference between a knockoff Grimlock and a legit Grimlock. Maybe even tell which era of Transformer your Grimlock is from. If you thought this video was helpful, make sure you hit that like button, if you haven't already. And share it amongst your Transformer collecting friends to keep them informed. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I have four more Dinobots to go through. As always, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.